pretty insane. Vad sa du? Har paketet kommit? Ska vi köra? Hi everybody and welcome to my M1 Max review video. In this video series we will take the 14 inch MacBook Pro from 2021 to the tests in various music application and performance tests. My name is Mitaz and if you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe, hit the like and the notification bell so that you get a notice as soon as I drop new videos. So in this video series we will check out the performance of the latest M1 Max uh, MacBook Pro. This is the 32 gigs version with uh, one terabyte of SSD. It has uh, 10 internal cores and it also has 24 graphic cores. And in some of these tests we will compare it to the first generation of the Apple M1. This is the Apple M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2020, which has 8 gigabytes of unified memory. And in my upcoming videos, we'll really try to max out the M1 Max because, uh, I mean, there's a Max in the name, so why not? And we'll be running plenty of audio track tests, Omnisphere tests, Serum tests, various uh, contact instrument tests, uh, and see how we basically can max out the M1 Max. So today the test is all about the uh, the M1 Max with the 32 gigs of unified memory against the Apple M1 first generation with only 8 gigs of unified memory. So let's see how they perform. Okay, get ready for our first test. And uh, on the left side we have the M1 Max with the 32 gigs of unified memory. And on the right side we have the original M1 with the 8 gigs uh, unified memory. And uh, our first test here, we're going to run a basic Billie Eilish track that ships as a demo project with uh, Logic Pro X. And to make this a just test, I'm using the same settings on the M1 Max and on the M1. So you can see we have both of these uh, connected to a power source with a power adapter. And let's look at the audio preferences. We have the buffer size set to uh, 128 samples on uh, the M1 Max and the M1. We're using the internal audio interface. The buffer size gives us uh, 6.1 milliseconds of output latency on the M1 Max and a slightly longer output latency, 7 milliseconds on the M1. On the M1 Max we have 10 cores and 8 uh, high performance cores. While on the original M1 we have 8 cores and 4 high performance cores. And we're also using the high precision 64 bit as our summing setting. The operating system on the M1 Max is Monterey OS X12. And on the M1 we still have 11.4, which is a big sur. The Billie Eilish track here is uh, on the lighter side, but uh, I use this track because you can compare it with your own performance on your own Max back home. And uh, it's basically just a kind of light arrangement with a bunch of alchemy synths, retro synth, but we all know that the alchemy synth is quite demanding. But there's uh, a ton of EQs and delays and reverbs on this project. So let's go to the chorus, play it back and see how the performance meter reads on uh, the M1 Max and the M1. Det är en sol vi håller kär Du väljer nu din väg Och månen flyter bort Så långt ifrån oss nu De skymmer aldrig mer Skymmer aldrig Okay, so the conclusion for the first test is uh, that we can see that the 8 cores of uh, the original M1 is working a little bit harder than the 10 cores of uh, the M1 Max. But it's uh, quite similar results and that's uh, maybe because it's the same CPU. It's just more unified memory on the M1 Max and yeah, the two additional cores. So that's the first test. Okay, so let's continue and play back my more elaborate song project, which we used in our previous test videos. I highly recommend you go back and watch my previous uh, test videos on the original M1 to get a better understanding of uh, the unified memory system and how it basically performs against the older Intel generation. And you can click the card up here if you want to watch the previous episode. Okay, so let's fire up our second test and now we can actually check the load speeds of this project. This is more heavy lifting project. The 
the M1 Max was slightly faster in loading this product. Now we can see this is a more heavy lifting product because we have tons of more tracks. There's, uh, I think it's like 10 instances of the Alchemy Synth. And we also have a Diva and Zebra 2 and a bunch of other plugins. And you can also see we have some audio tracks going. This is a more real life product than uh, the other tests that you can see on YouTube, which uh, just basically load up the same sample or the same instrument uh, uh, for 200 tracks or something. But a song product never looks like that and a song product is often more complicated. So let's open up the mixer so we can see what kind of tracks we have here. Here are the Alchemy tracks and you can see we have the Space Designer loaded with the 1.7 second nice hall. So that's the convolution reverb, some compressors, EQs, the gain tool. And we also have Valhalla Supermassive. I also used only the native ARM64 plugins. And uh, here are the audio tracks, which feature compressors, chroma reverbs. And we have some tape delays. And here we can see that we have the Diva, Zebra 2 loaded and a bunch of samplers and, and the retro synth. So let's also activate all these uh, chroma reverbs because we want to do a really heavy test do the same thing on this uh, second project on the M1 machine right so let's uh, play back the chorus of this track and see the difference between the performance on the M1 Max and the M1 Okay, so we can see that there's only a slight difference between the M1 and the M1 Max and it's not that surprising because it's the same CPU and we only have the two additional cores on the M1 Max. But you also have a lot more unified memory. But basically during these playback tests it's more of a CPU intense test rather than a memory test. And we can see that the drive O is barely moving, it's barely making a flinch because uh, you can stack up a whole lot more of audio tracks before you would see any drive I.O. performance hits. Okay, so it's time to do a little performance test with the Omnisphere plugin. You probably know that uh, Omnisphere is now fully ARM64 and Apple Silicon M1 compatible. So here I have a test product, we have 24 instances of the Omnisphere plugin. And on each of these instances we have a different patch loaded. It may be a string patch, it may be a texture pad or a choir pad. On each of the track we're playing a three part chord and we're adding a fourth note after one and a half bar. So that's uh, 24 instances of uh, the Omnisphere plugin. And now let's see how the M1 Max behaves. Pretty insane. You can see that we have uh, the course at about 25%. Uh, so we could add just a whole bunch of more Omnisphere presets. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, these are only like scientific tests because uh, you would never stack up this many Omnisphere plugins and having them all playing 
a three part or four part chord. In my typical tracks I use maybe a seven, eight instances of Omnisphere and have them play maybe one or two notes on each instance. So the possibilities here with Omnisphere is basically limitless and a huge thanks to Spectrosonics for making uh, Omnisphere 2 uh, Apple M1 compatible. Now let's run the same project on the 8 gigs uh, 13 inch M1. So you can see here with this test that uh, the 8 gigs M1 is definitely enough for uh, overall general music production because uh, you would never add and stack up this kind of uh, huge amount of Omnisphere instruments in one single project. Or at least I would never do that. Right, so for the final conclusion, is the MacBook Pro 14 inch uh, with the M1 Max CPU and 32 gigs unified memory, really worth the 4K euros you pay compared to the M1 8 gigs for 1.8K euros. You tell me in the comments. My personal opinion is that the M1 Max is a little bit overkill if you work with general music production, but for graphical heavy tasks, video editing and 3D rendering, and if you work with tons of big orchestral libraries, you might benefit from using the bigger brother now there's one thing that's really annoying and that I really don't like about the 14 inch MacBook Pro and that is that they placed the headphone jack on the left side of the computer rather than the right side on that 13 inch MacBook Pro. You obviously have the headphone jack on the right side which to me is more convenient. That said, one of the benefits of grabbing the 14 inch is that you get uh, three dedicated Thunderbolt ports and a dedicated MagSafe port for the power source. Because on the original M1, the 8 gigs, the 13 inch, you only have two Thunderbolt ports. And you have to sacrifice one of these ports uh, for the power adapter. And now, if you grab the cheaper M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch with the 8 gigs of unified memory, I do recommend grab something like the Belkin Thunderbolt Dock Core, which will give you a dedicated power connector, some extra USB ports, HDMI, DisplayPort and an Ethernet port. And now you can click the card up here if you want to watch my full review of the Thunderbolt Dock Core from Belkin. Okay, so if you're going to buy the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max CPU or the original M1 13 inch with 8 gigs of unified memory, you can grab them via my affiliate links in the video description below. And at the same time you're supporting my work here at YouTube. You can also support my work by becoming a patron or buying something from my web store, which is store.morindiomedia.com. All the links are available in the video description. Right, now you can continue and watch my next episode. I hope you had a nice time. Please let me know in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye.